Every world in The Sims 4 has a different aesthetic, from the hot deserts of Oasis Springs to the foggy dark corners of Moonwood Mill. There's always something unique to discover. So in today's Sims 4 build challenge, we're going to be building tiny homes for different worlds in the game. This wheel is full of every world in The Sims 4, including the three vacation worlds. So each time we're going to spin and see which one will be our inspiration. So let's go ahead and spin for the exterior and we're doing... Evergreen Harbor. Oh, so this is Evergreen Harbor. It comes with the Sims 4 eco lifestyle, and I'll admit it's probably one of my least favorite worlds in the game. It's industrial, there are shipping containers everywhere, recycling is like the main focus, so we have recycling centers, and it's polluted. The whole goal is to fix that problem, although I never have, so Sims are literally walking around with bags on their heads because it smells so bad here. But anyway, when I think about Evergreen Harbor, I always think about the train tracks and the shipping containers. There's a train yard in the back there, and there are these abandoned looking train tracks that run along the back of the world. So I think we should build an abandoned train yard or a shipping container lot that someone has turned into a little village. So to start off, I'm going to make sure I have my debug turned on. We're going to search up Eagle Lifestyle Debug, and I just want to start setting our aesthetic up. So I'm adding some of the abandoned train pieces. I don't want them to take up too much room, so I'm just gonna try and slide them over to the edge of the lot. We've also got the train tracks that we could put underneath, and we can add this piece here, basically just trying to mimic what's going on around the rest of the world. There's also some cool debug graffiti hiding in Strangerville. There are other options in the game, obviously, but I really like these ones. And also, one of my favorite things about trains is when they pass by, you see all of the graffiti on them. Especially like the cargo ones that I see a lot. They're like completely covered with graffiti and they just look so cool. So we've placed that on there and now I'm going to fill it in with the abandoned feel. We'll add in some wildflowers, some grass, just giving it an overgrown look. So, so far this is what we've got and now I'm going to build the actual homes. And I want all of these to look either like trains or like shipping containers. Let me see how doable this is actually going to be. So I'm just going to add some siding. We'll raise it up on a foundation. We're going to use a still foundation from base game. And by the way, you're going to notice through this video, I'm going to be using items from different packs. I'm not going to be restricting myself because then the video is just every room is a different pack and that is not what we're doing. Obviously, we're going to want to use items from those packs still, but the goal is to get it to look like the world and not the pack. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm adding some roofing here. I'm trying to make it look like that one. So we're going to bring the roofing down. I'm going to use this roof paint from Eco Lifestyle and I'm also going to add the matching trim. And then along the top of this train, there's like a ridge going along it. And for that, I think we're going to use these support beams from Eco Lifestyle. So I'm just going to run them all the way along the top. For my door, I'm thinking we use this metal one from the industrial loft kit. And then whatever we spin for later on will obviously have a big influence on the exterior as well. I just want to build the shells a little bit on the outside first just to get a general idea of what this lot will look like. So I've added some ladders there and on the drains themselves there are these tiny little bolts. So I think I'm gonna grab these wall lights from Eco Lifestyle. I'm gonna size them all the way down and I'm gonna place them in between my windows and then I'm just gonna bring them all the way down the front just like they are on the train. Here they are on the actual house and and then I'm just gonna go around and fill in the rest of the lot. So we're gonna do one more over here. Can I squeeze one right there? I think we're good. And then we're gonna have this open space. Maybe I could fit one more right here. So we're gonna do four homes here in total. I feel like we could easily make it look like that orange one. So I'm gonna add a half wall on top of this. We're gonna use some eco lifestyle orange metal with a matching trim, some metal for the roof. And then we could do like a rooftop moment. And eco lifestyle has these columns, which I'm I'm just gonna add onto all four corners. And I'm gonna place some more Strangerville graffiti right on the side of this one. All right, so here's the template for our train yard. Let's go spin to see what we're gonna do for this one. Okay, spinning for our first tiny home and we're doing San Sequoia. Well, it's going to be a family container. So San Sequoia is the world that comes with the Sims 4 growing together. The world itself is very cozy. There's a marina in the back here 
here. Of course, we have the iconic bridge. This part of the world has like a fishing theme. In the back there, it looks like a little fishing town. There are fish decals. The neighborhoods, like I said, are very cozy. We've got tree-lined streets. But one thing that stands out when I think of San Sequoia is the water park. I guess this is more of like a splash pad, but this is one of the really fun things that came with growing together. You can like make your own splash pad with these water umbrella things. The massive whale obviously comes to mind. So what if we built our own splash pad? So we're gonna be doing this one over here and because we have this rooftop, let's add some of the splash pad items on top. So we'll add a couple of these. All of these splash pads come in different shapes and sizes. So I'm gonna add a few. We can do like one here maybe and then one in the corner and we'll just space them out. Oh, we can have this slide. I always thought it was an elephant, but this is actually a whale. We still need a ladder leading up so I'm adding one right there. We have a picnic table here and on it I wanted to add a couple of the friendship bracelet making kits. I also added some gardening pots so I could stick flowers in here without it looking weird. And there we go we have a splash pad on top of our house. In no other circumstance would this ever work out. But guess what? It's The Sims which means we can do whatever we want. I'm actually going to be using these growing together windows all along the sides here and we also have these lights which I think I could put beside my door. We're aiming for a suburban family home meets train wreck. And of course, we cannot forget about our whale, which I'm gonna try and just put over in this corner here. And we can change the color just so it matches the rest of it, I guess. And now we just have a community splash pad that everyone can come and use. Maybe I should fix the pollution problem here, otherwise this is going to be a splash pad of acid. But there we have the exterior. Let's go inside. This is gonna be hard because obviously this is a very small home and we need to fit a kids room and a parent room. The bathroom, I'm sorry to this entire family, is going to be small. Where can I fit the bedrooms? Maybe if I brought this wall down and we bring it across. The bunk beds are gonna have to be a given so I'm gonna try and fit them in somewhere. Maybe we'll put them here. Then we can have a very small kids room but two kids can fit in there and the parent bed will work. It's just gonna have to be squished against the wall so the parents are gonna have to scoot over in the bed but this my friends will be functional so I am going to be aiming for a fishing theme in this house the bedroom wallpapers will be blue I can change the bed swatch to something blue same as these beds will do like the blue ones we'll use this wallpaper for the bathroom and maybe we should get our essentials first just to make sure we've got them so I'm gonna add a growing together fridge in the back for the counters I guess I can use parenthood and we'll just bring them along this way and we'll replace one of them with the matching oven our sink can go here. I had a feeling we might have to sacrifice our dining table in here, which is fine because I did add a picnic table upstairs. So I'm adding in the matching parenthood cabinets and maybe as an extra precaution, I'll add an extra dining table outside for them. This set I'm using here is from the Little Campers kit. I'll just kind of put it like, I don't know, over to the side or maybe, maybe it should be by the whale. We can even add some of the plates here from the toddler stuff pack. And then for our living room, we should be able to fit a couch. Couch. And I was thinking about maybe using the tiny living TV like this one, but on an angle. And I'll just squeeze over that door as far as I can get it to go. So we have our TV there, our couch, the family can sit together. And then I was thinking about adding a shelf up top here. And above that, we'll put some of the mounted fish. We can add some more growing together clutter around. I love adding these board games. And then also some of these street cars will definitely bring in the San Sequoia vibe. I'm pretty sure that pack was inspired by San Francisco given the, you know, bridge. So I think those streetcars are going to be a nice little detail. So this is how our living room turned out. I actually managed to put one of the sheep seats. We've got that over there in the corner. So we have seating for four in this tiny living room. I added some backpacks by the door, really just anything that was giving a family home. And then over in the back, this is where I did our washroom. I used some growing together stuff over in the corner there. We have a Discovery University shower, just keeping it small and some clutter. 
And for the bedrooms, we definitely aren't going to be able to fit a whole lot, but we could put a toy box in here. We can add some curtains and maybe we should actually use one of those splash pad things as one of our rugs. Like if we size one of them down and just put it like peeking out, that could be a cute idea. Maybe we'll do one of the green ones just so there's a little more contrast. I'm also just gonna add some more fish in here. This could be a hobby that the kids do with their parents. And we could also fit some kid decor. Like, oh, this one has the whale on it. This is from Parenthood. We've got the sailboat there. It's perfect. Okay, so here's our tiny kids bedroom. And then for the parents bedroom, I'm gonna bring in another growing together rug. I'm changing that wallpaper to green. We need a dresser in here. So I'm gonna be using these hanging clothes from Dream Home Decorator. And also for the kid clothes, they don't have a dresser in their room, but these backpacks actually function the same way as a dresser would. Not that Sims even need them. You just kind of like change their clothes wherever they are. I'm gonna add a mirror. We're using this one from Growing Together. So this is how our Sin Sequoia tiny home turned out. For my bedroom, I just added some curtains going along the wall with those curtain mounts so that they could pull across. And I'm happy we were able to fit four Sims into this little home. Let's move over to this one next. So we're going back to the wheel. So spinning for our next tiny home and we're doing Copperdale. So Copperdale is the world that comes with the Sims 4 high school years. This is what the world looks like. I think it's meant to be an old miners town. Obviously a main feature here is the high school. We've got the field in the back with cheerleading and football that you can do. Another main feature in the town square is the thrift and bubble tea shop. And this place is so cute. This is totally somewhere that I would go in real life. I love the colors in here. It's pastel. But like the town itself has a bit of an eerie vibe in my opinion. Like it's giving Stranger Things, Riverdale, the small town from It. Like no one would be that surprised if something bad happened here. But when I picture Copperdale, I'm always picturing the amusement park. We've got the iconic Ferris wheel, the ice cream stand, the weird mascot, and there are fairy lights everywhere. I come here often in my gameplay. This is actually one of my favorite spots to hang out in The Sims 4. So for this one, this is actually perfect because did you guys ever have school portables? Like a lot of the schools in my area at the time were so overpopulated that we literally had portable outdoor classrooms and they looked exactly like this. And oh god, they would get so hot and stuffy. It was mostly elementary schools that had them, but my first high school that I went to also had them and <laughs> that's probably a big reason why I switched. So we have our mascot outside. We had to include him. I also wanted to add the table and chairs that are present in the amusement park. We could add a football out here. And then I have a feeling that a lot of the amusement park things are gonna be way too big to include. Like, yeah, there's no way I'm gonna be able to fit an entire Ferris wheel here unless I like put it on top. But like that looks a little insane. I did find this sign, which we could easily just place behind here. And I'm sure that lights up at night. And I'm just adding again, the bolts on here to match the other one that we already have. All right, so this is going to be our Copperdale exterior. We've got our mascot. We've got the amusement park element, a little bit of the school vibe with the portable looking thing. And I'm thinking for the interior, we try and mimic that bubble tea thrift shop. This one will be so much easier. So we can do a bedroom over here. We're still going to be doing a tiny bathroom, but then we'll be able to have an open concept kitchen. We can do a living room with a desk and stuff. We are going to use these wallpapers on the interior, which I'm pretty sure are the actual wallpapers that are in the school. But then I was thinking we do a brick accent wall and maybe that can go through the bedroom too. And then for the bathroom, I'm thinking we do something like this and we'll use the matching high school years flooring. All right, starting off with the kitchen. I think I'm gonna use my Home Chef Hustle appliances, but we're gonna use Dream Home Decorator counters. But then I wanna use these cute bubble tea posters, which by the way, I need help in a lot of ways, but right now with bubble tea because I feel like bubble tea is something that I really like, but I can never never get the order right. Like I just always feel like I'm getting the wrong thing. So if we could just get an entire comment section full of your bubble tea orders, that would be great. And I'll be taking notes and maybe I'll start trying some of them and I'll let you know if I find any good ones. I like sweet, but not too sweet, you know? The other day I, okay. 
the other day. I ordered a bubble tea. It was called Coco Wow Original or something. And I was like, how could you literally go wrong with a Coco Wow Original? But when I got it, it literally just tasted like a cup of milk. There was nothing in it, it was just milk. And the place I go to has really good reviews, so I know it's a me problem. So please tell me your bubble tea orders. Thank you. So right now I'm adding fairy lights everywhere just to mimic the boardwalk. And in this nook, I was thinking about adding one of the school desks with one of the high school year's computers. And I also wanted to put a bookshelf right here. I want to add a bunch of neon signs in here. I was thinking about the cupcake sign from Get to Work. For the bathroom, I'm also using the high school year's sink and the mirror giving school bathroom. And then I do want to include a TV somehow. So I'm just going to move the door over for the bedroom and we'll do one of these small couches with the TV from Modern Lux that looks like a picture. I'll add a small rug and I feel like I should have room for a table and maybe on there we can put the bubble tea mascot. Oh, I do like the tarot one. This just reminded me. I like the bubble tarot. So I'm just going to put a couple of these. I'm telling you guys I'm getting this bubble tea like right after I post this video. This is a cute room. We've got our bubble tea shop inspired kitchen and living room. I love the pastel colors with all these posters and neon lights in here. The fact that we still fit a desk and a bookshelf is kind of impressive. Let's go do the bedroom. We do have a lot of room in here too. And I want to do a thrift shop inspired room over here, but I'm using this wallpaper just to go along with the theme that like something's up in here. I think I'm going to use this pastel bed and we can use one of the clothing racks like this. We'll hang some of our clothes on here. I definitely want to include one of the high school year's mirrors and maybe some of these base game framed pictures, which always make me think of wanted posters. I think it's this. We could still fit a TV in here. So I'm going to put one right there on that wall. Maybe we'll put up some cheerleading pom-poms, also some school flags. And there we go. We have our thrift shop inspired Copperdale bedroom. Keeping with the pastel theme throughout the house, we've got our wanted posters, our weird wallpaper, TV and pom-poms over to this side. And with that, we're ready to go back to the wheel. So spinning for our third tiny home and we are going to be doing Willow Creek. So Willow Creek is obviously one of the worlds that comes with the Sims 4 base game. We all know what this one looks like. It's probably the most famous world in the Sims 4. For main features, obviously we have the Magnolia Blossom Park. We have our main building over here with the bathroom, obviously all base game furniture. We could bring some elements from here to the outside of our place. We have our iconic neighborhoods, of course, with the goth mansion, tons of pink trees, and we have our downtown area for Willow Creek. I actually like the downtown area here. We've got a nightclub inspired by jazz music. A lot of this apparently was inspired by New Orleans, which you can tell by some of the architecture here. And we have a tree here that leads to a secret world in The Sims 4. So for the outside for this one, we're going to keep it pretty base game. We can use these windows. I'm going to replace the tree in the back, obviously, with a willow tree. We could use this pink one, although is that going to throw off our vibe? Maybe we'll use this willow tree instead. I know I wanted to use those yellow umbrellas that we saw in Magnolia Park, so we'll definitely add that out here, but I also wanted to add a chess table. So like this could even go up top. We could do a whole rooftop thing again. The only thing is to get a ladder up here, I would have to extend my fence over, I think. Why can we not put ladders on diagonals yet? Okay, yellow umbrella will do a chess table over here. So some landscaping would definitely help. I guarantee every house in Willow Creek has these massive outdoor wall lights. So I'm going to put those around. And I was also thinking about putting these because it reminds me of the downtown area. If we wanted to get really crazy, we could add some of the signs out here. I don't know where this cactus sign belongs. The cactus cantina sign. I'm sure it's downtown somewhere because where else would it be? Obviously in Oasis Springs on the bar in the desert. You know what? We're going to leave it. So we have our Willow Creek exterior. Later on, I ended up replacing this sign with this one, but RIP. For the inside, this is going to be a little awkward because it is on that diagonal, but I was thinking about doing my bathroom maybe in a weird shape like that, and then we leave the rest of it open. I wanted the inside of this to look like that one building in Magnolia Blossom, so I'm adding in some flooring and wallpaper that looks like it. Actually, this bathroom is so big. I think we could maybe 
maybe fit everything in here. Like we'll do a bathtub, a shower in the back here. We could do black accents to represent the goth mansion with like little things from the bathroom kit. I believe these were the curtains that were in there, but the wall height in that building is a lot bigger than this one. So let's again, just do black curtains. And I know the toilet would be functional over here. So I'm just gonna move it because then we can fit a sink over here. I think I'm also gonna shrink one of the base game jazz pictures just to bring that element in as well. This bathroom actually ended up looking kind of nice. I really like the black that we brought in for the goth mansion. This is definitely gonna be the nicest bathroom that we see today. So let's go do the rest of the house. I already brought in this jazz picture just because I feel like we need it in here and I feel like we should make the wallpaper green. Willow Creek has the green and pink trees. So maybe we could make it work with that color scheme, but I don't know, let's see. Snowy Escape has these trees, which are not the same obviously, but they do remind me of the pink ones in Willow Creek. So far this is giving elevated Eliza pancakes, which is perfect. Then I was thinking we do a divider here and our kitchen can actually be on this side. I'm just using base game stuff right now for my kitchen. So we've got that all sorted. I have dining outside again. I didn't even plan for it, but there we go. I have a base game dresser over to the corner there and I don't know how much we're gonna get for seating. Oh, that little room had ottomans in it. So what if we did an ottoman by the end of the bed? I feel like the divider is doing more harm than good at this point. So I'm just gonna add the ottoman right at the end here. We can add a base game bookshelf on the wall. And if we change this door to a smaller one, then we can fit a TV onto this wall here. I feel like there are also postcards hidden in debug. There is, there's a Sylvan Glade postcard, which is the secret world that I was talking about with that tree earlier. And I guess we can fill it up with some other ones so it doesn't look so weird. A final thing I'm putting is this little boat here because there actually is one of those boats in Willow Creek and we'll add a streetcar. All right, this is our Willow Creek inspired bedroom and we have the rest of the house laid out over here. We've got our kitchen, our living room, our massive bathroom. And with that, we're ready to go and do the final house. It's like a weird ad showing up on the bottom of my wheel now. So don't mind that, I guess. We might have to find a new wheel, but let's go ahead and spin for the final one. And we're doing Hanford on Bagley. So Hanford on Bagley is the world that comes with the Sims 4 cottage living. This is what it looks like. This is one of my favorite worlds in the Sims 4. This is the main downtown area. The whole thing is giving cottage core. There are shops back there where you can go window shopping. We have this park here with the waterfall in the back. This weird, I don't even know, like ruin situation with a massive snail in the center. We have actual ruins happening over here. It's a very cute world with lots of wildlife and a heavy focus on farming. This actually works out really well because the template that I made already uses these window boxes from Cottage Living, but I also wanted to include the wild rabbit home and the wild bird home. So we're just going to have wild animals roaming around here, just like in Henford. Maybe we could add some of the chicken and cow greenery, like going along the side of the house. Actually, maybe along the side of the house, we'll just add gardening pots so that Sims could actually do gardening here. I wanted to include the garden patches, but I don't think we'll have enough room for them over here. And I'm also gonna add some of these going up the side of the house from Cottage Living as well. So we're not changing a whole lot for the outside since we already did a lot of it, but I've added in some of the Henford elements. And then for the interior, I feel like the whole thing has to be green. I'm also second guessing using such a big door because now it makes it difficult to do any sort of bedroom. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have our bed, open concept again, bathroom over here. And then this is gonna be like a pantry. And then right in the middle of it, snail. I'm gonna put up some shelving and then on the shelves we can add anything that you would find in a Henford on Bagley fair. So I'm adding just some pantry items in here like some spices. These are mystery shop boxes like this is a grocery shop box. So in there maybe they've gotten some stuff from downtown. I'm also gonna add some pumpkins. So we have our pantry. Why is the snail in there? I don't know. Why is he there in the first place? I had these big windows which I think I'm gonna have to replace 
place with these. Basically just so I can get my kitchen in here. Oh, this one's big. I feel like I could actually get a dining table in the house. Because the world is so green, I'm using things like this rug from Eco Lifestyle. Also this one from high school years. I'm pretty sure I could also fit a living room over here, even if it's just a very small one. Like we'll have a couple chairs or maybe this base game love seat, which I've unironically been using a lot lately. <laughs> I feel like we need more flowers in here. So I'm just adding a couple of those. I need a dresser. And I think on top of there, I might put a TV like this one from the basement kit. I know they have telephone boxes in the downtown area. So I'm going to add one of these. I think it's red, but I don't have a single touch of red in here at all. Unless we tried to force it and just brought in like red accents. So here we have our cute and cozy Henford on Bagley inspired house. I did end up bringing in some of the red with like this poster here. I also used one of the boxes with apples in it as my end table. Going over to this side, I tried to bring in some more red flowers and we've got some of the clutter from the Home Chef Hustle stuff pack up top. <laughs> we have our weird pantry area in the back and for my bathroom, I wanted to bring in a lot of greenery. So I used some of the Blooming Rooms kit vine curtains, also a snowy escape plant rug. And over to this side, I just used one of the cottage living pictures with all of our essentials. So that is how our really weird train yard turned out. I can't get over the splash pad on the top of that one, but I'm sure Sims will have a blast with that. Let me know which one was your favorite in the comment section down below. And let me know any video ideas you want to see me do in the future. If you guys like the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.